like you see, the one over here, uh, a bundle is mm. this. So we have about 20 bundle here. Mm -hmm. And this, <laughs> this heap that you are seeing here can give you You will get 16 bars of gari as a result of harvesting one acre of cassava. Currently, we are selling one bag. <clears throat> the cassava big. Hello guys, welcome back to Startup GH. My name is Kekeli Michael. It's been a long time since I posted a video. But today we are currently on a cassava farm. In today's video, I want to explore the opportunities of adding value to this raw gold. Today we'll be speaking to a gentleman called Eric, who is going to tell us more about how to make money from cassava. My name is Eric. We cultivate cassava, maize, and yam. And uh, for the cassava, we further process it into gari production and cassava dough as well. For my story, I was I was discouraged when I have a lot of cassava and with the price that they are buying it, I don't like it. That's why I venture into processing, thinking that when I add value to my cassava, I will make a lot of money. But processing side, I begin to know that there's a, f a lot of challenge there as well. Uh, basically, adding value to your agriculture product can actually put additional coins in your pocket. How do you make money? Um, for me, I'm a small startup. Uh, what we do is uh, we make money. Uh, on when there is no when there is no enough gary in the system so when there is scarcity we make a lot of money that's when we we actually sell out so what we do is that we process the gary and we hold it so when there is no plenty gary in the system then we come out to sell our own that's how we make profit um, what you do is it capital intensive Yes, guy processing is capital intensive. Well, what are the things you need? So um, the activities in the in the production chain is it's a lot. So if I have to start with the production chain for you, after we harvest the cassava into the production processing site, we need to get some people that will peel. So the peeling you have to pay, pay for the people that will peel. After peeling, you need a certain group of people that will also wash. After washing, you need another set of people that will actually grate it into cassava uh, dough. So after uh, grating into cassava dough, you need another set of people that will come and bag it and leave it for a day of fermentation. After a day of fermentation, you need another set of people that will actually have to come and do pressing before you can get your cassava cake that will be ready for processing to gary production. Did you start the gary production before growing the cassava? Or? No, um, I was happy when I researched and I noticed a, a bowl for whereby we the process into the process cassava into ethanol and further get a bowlful from it so i was a bit doing under studies to actually see how how the process is so i started from the gary to actually understand the cassava how we can best get cassava into ethanol and bowlful so that is what makes me feel like I want to do cassava. But for now, I'm processing it into gari because I don't have facility to go into uh, ethanol production right now. Okay. Now, what's the size of your cassava farm? So this is uh, 25 acres. 25 acres. Yes. And which, how many are you using for the cassava? And uh, 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 
currently I would say I have 12 acres that I have cassava on. Is the 12 acre enough to cover for the year production? No, 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 no. It's not enough. But, you know, I have financial constraints, so I couldn't cultivate everything. Yeah. So, um, as a businessman, uh, would you say uh, gary production is more profitable than farming the cassava? Um, it's, yes, gary production is more profitable as a, as a farmer but not as a processor alone because uh, right now if you can harvest the raw material from your farm to your processing site that is when you can actually match the profit but if you are only outsourcing from farmers meaning you are just buying to process you buy it in a very high price and you earn, and after you earn the production your cost of production will actually go high so uh, i would say doing the two together might actually be ideal for gary production i want you to walk me through let's say i have an acre okay i want to know the cost of work um whether we are going to break through or we, we make a loss okay. using one acre. Okay, so you have an uh, one acre of a cassava. Okay, let's assume you are buying from other farmers. Okay. okay. So assuming you are buying one acre of uh, cassava from other farmers. One acre of cassava, we assume that we can get eight tons of uh, uh, raw material of cassava. So um, eight tons, a ton right now is around thousand Ghana cities. Which area? So talking about Mafi Kumasi. So I paid a visit to Mafi Kumasi and it turns out that prices are even higher than yesterday. I got this for thousand five hundred cities. But you can see this is left with small for it to be up to thousand five. Uh -huh, okay. okay. Fifteen million. Where you can get uh, a tricycle or a ton of cassava, uh, thousand Ghana cities. Oh, so you both use tricycle? Yes, we use tricycle. By tricycle, is relatively one ton of cassava. One ton of cassava. Okay. So one ton. Thousand cities. Thousand cities. Okay. So, when you harvest, who is doing the harvesting? You have to contract other people to harvest for you. That's also part of your cost. That's also part of your cost. How much do they do the harvest? For so, uh, currently, when they harvest one acre of cassava, it's around five hundred cities. You That's pay the right. labor for five hundred cities. Okay. So after you harvest, you will be getting about eight tricycles okay. of cassava. Okay. okay. So you will send it to your processing site, then you commence peeling. Now your peeling for the peeling team, at least 10 people have to be peeling one tricycle for four hours. So when you do when you want to peel about eight tricycle, then probably when you have 10 times eight, that will be 80 people. So imagine you have about 80 people peeling uh, an acre of a cassava. Okay, so you have to pay that team. For me, uh, these 10 people peeling one tricycle of cassava, I pay them 100 Ghana. So now that I will be harvesting one acre of cassava and getting eight tricycle or eight tons, it means that I have to pay them uh, 100 Ghana times eight, that's 800. 800 CDs for peeling. So you add your 800 CDs to 
the harvesting, 500 cities, that is 130, 1,300. Then after peeling, you call for washing. So the washing, you have your team that will wash for you. Let's say if they wash one tricycle for you, you pay them 20 cities. So this time around is eight tricycle. So that is uh, almost uh, eight times 20. That's 160. So when you add the 160 to uh, 1,003, you get 1,460, right? After, after washing, then you will actually go for grating, where you have to call your boys with your uh, grater. You have to grate the cassava into, into the cassava do for you. Okay. So the grating, for me, I have my own grater that uh, I used to grate with. And um, I have the boys that will grate for me. So probably I have five teams that, grate, that do the grating. How much did you buy the grater? I bought my grater around, um, it's 8,000. That, that was uh, 20, uh, that was 2020. Okay. Yeah, I got my grater 2020. So after you, you get the boys, there are five teams. I pay them around, uh, each person I pay them 10 CDs. So that is 50 CDs. But this time around, they are doing eight tricycle. So eight times is uh, uh, five, 50. Okay. That's almost 400. Then you add it to your 1,460. Okay. That would be 2,000. Yeah, so you can be doing the calculation for me. Okay. Yeah, so that will be around 2,000 something. Then after the grating, you need a team that will come and bag it, keep it for a day of fermentation, and be ready. The next day, they will come and put it under a press, where they will press it and take the water out of it. Okay, so that one to take another one day. So on the third day... So the press, how much do they take? The presses, uh, I have two boys that normally do that. So uh, normally I just give them by day money, which is two, uh, 25 CDs. Uh -huh. So now that I have uh, one acre, maybe I have to pay them more than that because they will be doing much. Okay, all right. So when you add your cost of pressing to, to your 2,000, around 2,000, You'll be getting maybe 2003 or 2004. Then talk about uh, now you are ready to roast your gari. After, after the, the watering, you have your cassava cake. So you are ready to roast your gari on the third day. So the roasting of gari for, I have a sea spot. The, the, our local way, we have a sea spot that we roast. So many six people are roasting. So a day, they can give me two bags of gari. Okay. From one tricycle? From two, two bags of gari as the team that will roast for me, okay. they are six people. Okay. So a day, they can only get two bags of gari a day okay. from morning to evening. Okay. So every day, I mark them 25 cities. Every day. So when the team, the whole team, is six people are marked in 25 cities that makes almost how much 50 50 150 cities right so 150 cities per day but a day that two bags of gari is equivalent to one tricycle so many they are going to work for eight days so you you add uh, you multiply the 150 times eight days then you get the cost the total cost of uh, the roasting then you add the total cost of the roasting to the previous total that you have the previous cost total that you have okay so at the end of the day that you like thousand that would be like thousand no already we have got about two thousand something uh, no i mean just for the eight days that's for the eight days. That will be like thousand two. Okay. So at the end of the day, you will have uh, two bags, two bags times eight. eight. So that will be 16 bags. 
So 16 bags, you will get 16 bags of gari as a result of harvesting one acre of cassava. Okay. And uh, currently, we are selling one bag, uh, 1,000 Ghana cities. That will be 16,000. So doing your course very well, you will, s you will notice how much profit you make. So uh, the cost we estimated is not even up to 5,000. It's not even up to 5,000. Okay. So that means you will make about 11,000. No. So have you had the raw material cost to it? We have got one tricycle of ga uh, okay. cassava, 1,000 Ghana cities. Okay. So the eight will be 8,000. 8, that is aside okay. before the processing cost. Eight, eight plus five. So that will be 13,000. 13, okay. So you are making a profit. About 3,000. Okay, roughly. roughly. And there's other expenses that I never mentioned like fuel, machine maintenance, uh, food for workers, that I never mentioned. And when you do all that courses, you will notice that... Okay, let's try and make all those courses. So on a typical day, like, what do you... Like, yeah, so on a... Miscellaneous expenses. Yeah, so when you talk about miscellaneous, I think water. We need a lot of water when we are processing cassava. So uh, if you want to quantify the water that we use a day, um, for eight days, a day you can use five cities of water. Okay, so by eight, that's, um, let's say, um, uh, five by eight, that's, that's how much? Five times eight. <laughs> so five times is eight you get a cost for water and when we talk about fuel because we are going to be using our tricycle up and down a day i can buy fuel 50 ghana and the next day i have to buy fuel again for the tricycle and for the greater two we buy fuel anytime we are going to grate a, a tricycle a, a tricycle of cassava we buy for almost uh, let's say uh, 20 cities and to grate one tricycle for us. So this case that you are grating about eight tricycle, that will be 20 by eight, uh, by eight. That will be 160 added to your miscellaneous cost. And food. Who are you feeding yourself for? No, you are feeding almost every worker that comes to your processing site. Because it's a, a very intense job. They don't have time to go and buy food or to leave the job. So I mean, you can you grow meat. Just give them yeah, but you know, when people are working with you with this hard labor, you have to take care of them well. So, the culture that we have in our system here is anybody that comes to you to actually help you work, you have to feed him. So, we, we are not helping, we are employing them. Yeah, you employ them, but some way, somehow, we, we feed them. That is our culture. So sometimes I buy full ingredient and one person is allocated for that to cook for them. Yes, those are the miscellaneous costs. So when you are totaling that one, it's also can amounted to thousand five, two thousand. So in 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 a, in in brief, you are processing one acre of cassava. You are getting your revenue sixteen thousand, and the total cost of processing can be around 14,000 or 13,000. In that way, is it worth it? Like, is it? Yes, so on, on, the, on, on, on the business aspect, we have read a system that when you wanted to do that, you should have enough gary keep, you should hold the enough gary. Like hold the gary. Hold the gary so that when the market price shoots, then you release it into the system so that you can double your your margin um is there a way that cassava gets cheaper and you guys also make more profit yes it seems it's expensive now yes there's a way cassava got cheaper there's a season where a lot of people are eager to approve their cassava because it's half matured yes so at that time there's a lot of cassava in the system so it becomes very cheap that we can process into Gary. That way your cost goes down. Yeah, that way your cost of raw material goes down. I mean, I, I know farmers that sell a corn for like 400 cities. 
we have these companies that are even buying less than thousand. What's the difference? Yes, so the difference is these companies are buying in volumes. And some of we, the Gary processors, we are barely buying in bits. So when uh, this big company comes to buy in volume, they convince the farmers that they are not interested in, in the cassava itself, but they are interested in the, the, in the starch content. So they bargain to get the price down, all in the name of their buying in volume as well. And the farmers are ready to sell all the farm at once and have a bulk money. So that is the big difference. So you Gary processors too, you can also bargain on a very good price if you are ready to buy in volume. Okay. Um, now you study that over the year, like this year particular, the price has been stable for a long time. Yes. What is costing that? Yes, so um, personally, I can't talk for all. Personally, what I have noticed is that there's a lot of uh, this uh, factories coming up. Uh, I mean the starch factories, the ethanol factories and other cassava processing factories coming up. Uh, I think they have, have, they have the bigger chest to consume a lot of cassava at a go. So they have actually go into the cassava industry and taken a lot from the industry. So that makes a, a shortage of cassava in the system. So I think that is making the price of cassava appreciate recently. So as a Gary producer and a cassava farmer, um, which variety of cassava would you uh, recommend? Yes, yeah, so I would recommend uh, Sika Banchi. Um, because Kabanchi is a, is a very good cassava in terms of uh, its whiteness and the tissue. The tissue is very bulky and when you use it to process cassava, the cassava is very white, very nice and you have plenty of uh, gari when you, when you use the Kabanchi. What about the other, the other ones you use for food? They also white. Yes, the cassava is also white, but at the end of the processing, your gari, the face of the gari will not be all that white compared to Sika Banchi. So, you, as a producer, uh, what do you consider as a, a good quality gari? Okay, a good quality gari is when, one, the look of the gari. So, when you brought your gari and there's other foreign particle inside, immediately is telling me this gari is not healthy okay another one is when the gari have fermented too much yeah there are some gari take them they look like they are eating parastamol yes so that that means that the time the time of fermentation have been long instead of two uh, one day fermentation they have taken more days of fermentation so when at the end of the day when the gari is ready it become like very acidic to to the mouth. Yeah, like you are eating bang. <laughs> so, um, what happens if you don't ferment it? You just straight up. Just yes. So, um, when you do it straight up, what happens is that you, the farmer, you lost because when you process today, you grate today, you press today, and you roast it today, you have a very nice gary, very good taste of gari but you will not have the volume that okay, you expected yeah, from the gari to swell up to swell up okay yes to ferment and become plenty for you this one how uh, how many can you do how many motoki can you do oh a day i can do about three or four four motoki yeah how much do you charge for a motoki 100 cities for one motoki yes uh, are you sure? Are you doing it alone? Yeah, I'm doing it alone. Don't you get tired? At times, I get tired. Mm. Is it profitable? Yeah, it's profitable. Is there a machine for you? It's for my father. Your father? Yeah. So in a week, how much can you make with this machine? Oh, if we can, a week I can get like 500 cities. A week 500 yes. cities? Yes. Okay. Well done. Thank you. And let's talk about challenges. I know challenges are a stepping stone. Of course. What are some of the challenges uh, peculiar to you? 
Yeah, so um, the one of the biggest challenge in this cassava processing is uh, um, labor. Yeah, it's a very good business, but if you don't have people around you, it becomes so challenging. You alone cannot do it all. So it's the biggest challenge we have. Aside that one, we have uh, our uh, financial issues that um, we, we wish we can have simple machines or uh, uh, self-automated machines that can actually do a lot for us. Yes, those are the few challenges you have. Mm. So tell me more about the self-automated. How does it work? Like it does the whole process for you? Yeah, so we have a full, full automated machine and we have semi-automated machine. So uh, just like when you go to uh, these mega factories and they have a, a machine lineup, okay? So the same as cassava processing too, we have a gari processing machine where you can harvest your cassava in a very raw state. You go to the factory, you pour it in a, in a bin which can wash the whole cassava and there's a conveyor from there that will convert the washed cassava into a pillar and the pillar will also peel. After the pillar peel, it will convert into another wash system wash it and the conveyor will convert it straight into the grater and the grater will grate it and there will be a collecting point where you collect it in a, a sack ready for fermentation and probably you can move it to a press and the presser will also press it within some few hours unlike our manual way we can use this to press so this one within some few hours or a minute then it's ready then you take it to the roaster. The roaster too is a robotic or uh, a machine that will roast it, not manual. So this is what we call a semi-automated machine. How, how expensive can this machine be? Because it sounds like it can be done in Ghana. Uh, it's, it's difficult. I haven't seen some here before, but how much would this machine cost? I would like to you. It's a very expensive machine. Let's talk about the benefit of you as a farmer growing your own cassava because it's like that one too is another challenge altogether yeah combining the two and ending with the production or how how beneficial is that one uh, because i see these locals they do it and constantly they have uh, cassava and they yes. are turning out more gary Yes, so basically it's a big challenge um, for you, the same person into cassava farming and going into processing. Yes, so another benefit of doing your own cassava farming is uh, the cassava planting material. That's a cassava stick. So like you are seeing behind me here, this is a stick that I just harvested uh, from my own farm and it's ready for the market and some guys are coming for it to give me cash. How much can you make out of this? So like you see, the one over here, uh, a bundle is 25 CDs. Mm -hmm. So we have about 20 bundle here. Mm -hmm. And this, <laughs> this heap that you are seeing here can give you times 10 of the one that is on the ground. So I can make this 20 times 25. It's a whole lot of money. So let's say an acre, how many bundles can you get from an acre? So a bundle you get mm -hmm. from an acre. Yeah. So you can plant four times four of acres a bundle can plant times four times four of, a, of an acre so there are 40 bundles in an acre yes so 40 times four that's 120 bundles yes. okay 120 times 25 cities yes Boom. that's another cash okay so um i realized that the planting material even transporting itself cry it's more expensive than the planting materials yes 38 so when you want to transport it, if you don't have your own car, if you went for a car, they will charge you big. Mm. But the good thing about our cassava planting material is that when you buy it, it's for you forever. The next season, you don't buy cassava planting material again. So even on the on the side hustle, your 
your steak scrap can even cover up for some of the expenses. Of expense. course, of course, your steak. Right now, the steak is, is also a good. Basically, adding value to your agriculture product can actually put additional coins in your pocket. That's what I believe. And that doesn't mean that there's no challenge there. There's a lot of challenge if you want to do that. Earlier I mentioned some of the challenge. Now, um, what are some of the fixed, say fixed assets you need apart from the land? Yes, so some of the assets, I mean, as in machines. Like the things you use to get the gary. Yes, so the things that we use to get the gary is one, the greater we basically need a pillar because peeling is one of the challenge to the processing because you have taken a lot of times for for you to peel a small tricycle of gary so if you get the machine for peeling it will fast track or it will be very smooth that we get our dough ready within a day don't you think the way you have um a pillar for maize. How do you call it? Shela, maize yes, shela. Yeah, shela. If the community can get a pillar, would it be a profitable venture? Of course. If a community can get a cassava pillar, it will be a very profitable venture. Mm, with your experience, how how many years in adding value to your? It's three years. Three years. Yeah. Would you consider um, Gary production to be profitable? Yes. Or a risky venture. Uh, Gary production is a profitable business, but uh, there is a lot of uh, but over there in terms of your plan, the way you plan, the way you go things, you go about the processing. Okay. Yes, and um, and especially the way the the machines that you have, if you are basically into manually you actually not make enough profit yes so any final secrets like i mean when people say it's not profitable i, I like you have been inside it's not profitable but you have been inside for three years which suggests that it's okay you yeah. really hold your body um what are some of the tips and secrets that you advise any newcomer coming yes yeah, so any newcomer coming to this business I would just advise that you should be ready to face a lot of challenge. And secondly, you should have enough cash. Because for this business, what happened is that when you process, immediately the price might be very low for you to even go to the market and sell. So you might be you might wish to keep the cassava, to, you might wish to keep the gari for some time. When the price shoots, then you go to the market. But when you do that, how can you process again if your money is being locked up in the room? So I'd advise any newcomer that you should have enough money to be able to be processing and keep a lot of gari. So that when the price shoots, so that's the secret, when the price shoots, now you have volumes over there, you can just take it out and you send it to the market. Now you also make a margin on that difference. Okay, can I also decide that um, I'll wait for you to process the gary, then I'll buy and haul, then sell? Yes, of course. But you know, some of us that we understand the system, when you come the time that the price is not okay, we might not be able to sell it to you. Okay. Yeah. Because some of the farmers that I also know, they also hoard it for the price to shoot. Okay. Yes. So if you get a six month maturity cassava, okay, and then one year, which one would you? So I'll go for one year. Why? Because a six month uh, maturity cassava, you will not get one. The gare will not be heavy. And you will not get a lot of tissue, so you will not get plenty gary in the six month cassava maturity cassava. But one year, you have all the you have all the full potential, so you have the gary will be very heavy, and you have plenty of gary. Okay. Last year, did you do production? 
Yes. And this year? Yes, this year. Are you done with the production for this year? Okay, this year, I'm not done. This year, I'm buying cassava. Okay. But uh, because of the raw material, the cost of the raw material, I put a hold on the production this year. Okay. So, at uh, what month do you start with the dairy production? So, like you can see, these are my own cassava. In the next two months, they will be ready for harvesting. Twelve months. Yes, so these are 12 months. So by next, uh, we are in, I guess, yeah. September, October, it will be ready for harvesting. Okay. So I'm ready to zoom into processing from uh, uh, October. So last year you did the same 12 acres? No, I did more than 12 acres. How many acres? Uh, last year I did about uh, 20 acres. 20 acres. Yes. Well, what was the profit? I'm getting this <laughs> uh for that one profit as in the whole farm yeah the whole farm the whole 20 acres. okay so last year what actually helped me is that um, we we hold a lot of gary so when the price is shooting this year we take advantage so we are able to get at a point early this year somebody came for 36 back 40 bucks and so that is why i see the revenue but like i said when you do the total 36 back 40 bucks you know how much revenue we are making uh, 36 alone is 36 thousand then the 40 alone is 40 000. okay that's like 70. you see when it's wholesome money like that that one there can easily be calculated exactly <laughs> So, so on a 20 i just want to have a picture of um, the 20 acres you know, how much you should be expecting on the 20 acres your revenue should be around over 120,000 Ghana cities that's your revenue including your uh, expenses before you take off your expenses and you know how much profit you are making let's talk about the marketing before we leave how okay. do you sell your guy so for me i i deal with the local market and one-on-one -on -one as well so what i do is that um, for me i don't do exactly what the local market do i don't fetch so i do scaling so i scale my bag of gary down and i'll be marketing online to people that want it two bags three bags and some other free people that export it they actually come and i will give them the 100 kg back and they want to buy it they sometimes the guy that bought it this year is also exporting it he came for about 36 back before the other the rest that we sold through that the market men, when i started the market men were not willing to buy from me because of uh, uh, the way i scale it I'm using skill, okay. but uh, the, somewhere around the year, there was a shortage in the system, so they don't have any choice. So when I told them this is the price, they came and buy it, but some few people have actually said they make profit when they sell it, so it's, it's not a bad business for them, it's ideal. So uh, some of them introduced me to other market women, I also sell to them. So just like most farmers, you produce and the challenge of selling it, uh, do you carry business with as he has, but you, like you keep a lot and you don't get biased? No, I think uh, for since I started this business, uh, I decided to keep it because of uh, a reason known to me, but Gary have a lot of demand. When you put it in the market, people are there to pick it up especially this market women they need a whole lot of gary i remember when i started i have about uh, over 150 bags of gary so uh, i quickly went to one of the markets ashama so i meet this woman that they call gary uh, queen or whatever he said i should bring all the hundred bags show me money you want to pick the hundred bags but the price that is, she is negotiating i don't like the price what? Because then we are selling the Gary 500 series per bag, but he is willing to pay me 350 series. Okay. And I say no. So right there, right there, I understand that no, this thing 
you have a market so just be willing to sell it the price that they want you won't keep it in your room yeah um if someone needs gary in large part can you deliver oh yes i can i can fully deliver full container of uh, uh gary quality gary of course, quality gary. You know the gary now, they have variety there. Yes, so basically the more reason why myself I'm going into the farming is to supply quality gary. Because when you focus on buying cassava, you might not get the kind of cassava that you want. But you have got order, you have to supply. So you will force to buy the, that cassava. But if I have my own farm, I know the type of cassava I'm, I'm putting in my farm. Because I know what I want to use it for. So I always have quality Gary, and I have a lot of testimony people I have supplied Gary to. I've been here as supplied Gary to around the region through VIP bars and all that, and people call me and say they like my Gary. Can you put your number out there in case somebody wants to make further inquiry or consult you on how to start their own Gary farm? Of A course. Gary uh, factory. Okay. Zero two four. Six six five five two four seven, and the full name. And the full name is Eric Duce. This is my hustle. If you find value in this, subscribe to the channel, like the video, and share. See you in the next video.